North Texas, thank you for sharing your pictures. Baseball size hail pounded parts of DFW overnight, leaving hundreds of millions of dollars in damage. A quick, intense storm stretching through Cotton, Denton, and Tarrant counties. Thanks for joining us. I'm John McKay. I'm Cynthia Isaye. Repeats in the Weather Center getting new data right now, but let's start with Jason Wheeler. He's live in Carrollton, where Jason residents took a beating last night. Oh, did they ever, and so did this dealership where we are, John and Izzy. This is classic Buick GMC uh, in Carrollton, right at the intersection of 35 and the George Bush Turnpike. You mentioned that uh, baseball-sized hail. We are almost sure that this car here must have seen that. Look at the indention in that windshield. Just shattered the whole thing here, too, and uh, this is repeated throughout this parking lot. If you go not far away from here, though, you see a lot more damage as well. Let's just take a look at some of what you sent us uh, from this storm overnight. Night. This is uh, just some of the uh, viewer video that has been sent to us. Hail up to baseball size hitting homes and cars. It was really loud. If you were sleeping, it probably woke you up if you were in that area and uh, very damaging as well. $425 million in estimated damage done by this storm. 20,000 structures damaged, 25,000 vehicles, including, of course, uh, at this dealership where we are this afternoon. Uh, and you go through these neighborhoods uh, nearby, you can see car after car pulverized, uh, uh, the windshields there, and uh, homes, many of them damaged as well. We saw roofing contractors already at work. And again, this was from a storm that just lasted a few minutes. Never in my life I heard something like that. So I came and I look out the window and I saw this huge chunks of hail outside. And I was like, oh my God, my cars. That's, that was the first thing on my mind, the cars. Yeah, well, the homes didn't fare much better, and certainly solar panels were no match for the hailstones either. Uh, they got it really badly. Uh, you know, I've got a list here that we pulled this up today. This goes all the way back to 1950. This is the 35 most costly storms in Texas history. This one from last night, even though it only lasted a few minutes, it would fall in line here at about number 21, $425 million in damage done in just a matter of minutes. Let's take a little bit uh, more of a look at this list here. The costliest Texas storm by far Hurricane Harvey last year 19 billion dollars but there are hail storms all over this list San Antonio 2016 the Fort Worth Mayfest storm remember that one went back in 1995 still on the list and uh, 8 through 10 slots 8 through 10 are other DFW hail storms we have seen a number of them here and you know what if you're in a neighborhood that got it really bad last night but you didn't you might still get hit in your premiums next year as you know, insurance is, uh, is, uh, is something that we pay collectively, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like taxes. You don't mm -hmm. have enough money to pave all the streets, right? But we all pay for a piece of it. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with claims and insurance. So uh, the more claims in the area, the more our, our premiums are going to raise. That's the way it works. That was Cesar Canales from uh, Allstate talking to us today. Uh, I'm just about out of time here, but stick around for 6 o'clock because uh, Cesar today also filled us in on one big mistake that a lot of us are making when we choose our insurance coverage and we don't figure it out until a day like today after we've seen this terrible kind of hail. Question is, are we going to see more of this as we head through the next day or two? Uh, let's get over to Chief Meteorologist Pete Delkis in the studio who is looking at our chances for that. Hey, Pete. Well, Jason, we do have a little bit more in our forecast night, and I'm certainly not predicting baseball or softball size hail, but as we take a look at what's happening out there right now, the sun is out. We do have a few spotty showers and thunder showers that have tried to develop off to the west of uh, Fort Worth around Graham down to Mineral Wells. You can see this little activities from Archer City down to Hamilton right now. Then to the east of Dallas, a few little spotty showers that try to develop around Greenville, Sulphur Springs up uh, north of Sulphur Springs and south of Sulphur Springs. So we're seeing a little bit of activity, but the Dallas Fort Worth area other than just a couple of clouds were all in the clear. So as we head through tonight, we keep a little activity off to the to the east of Dallas, but it's overnight that we're concerned about or really any time, but certainly overnight when everyone's trying to get a little bit of sleep. But as we move through the overnight, this model has been the most accurate of all of all the other ones. The other one, I mean, it's just been off the charts inconsistent for the last couple of weeks due to this unusually warm weather arriving much earlier than it should. But with that said, overnight, 
There you go. There's nothing on this model, the most accurate of the one, except here in north, northeast Texas. But I'm not going to rule out yet another isolated shower or thunderstorm. So I do believe that overnight tonight, 20% of north Texas does have that chance of seeing an isolated shower and thunderstorm. That's what we had in our forecast last night, and that's what happened. I know the, the damage was isolated across our 33 counties. The majority of us didn't see anything at all, but the couple of spots that did the damage, as Jason mentioned, was significant. That potential for an that coverage of storms we had last night, it's a possibility again tonight. Otherwise, most of us are dry. It'll just be a warm and muggy night. Now, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. I'll explain just exactly what took place, kind of an interesting scenario that we had last night. I'll have your weekend forecast, too. It's all coming up. John? All right.